Freezer challenge, take one. Take one. Take one. Oh, I just put freeze challenge. Yeah, I'm gonna freeze. <laughs> Cooking meals out of my freezer is one of my absolute favorite things to do. I hide so many treats for myself there. I feel like during these times, treating your freezer as your pantry, which I've said many times, is just a great strategy. Mmm, que delicioso! Go into the freezer. Please don't look in here. Okay, let's begin. I'm so excited. We're gonna use tortillas and hot dogs, two things that are always in our freezer. Anything can be a taco, and a hot dog taco, two powerhouses together. What a meal. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my like spice blend situation. So I'm gonna do cumin, black peppercorns, and then like a teaspoon of Szechuan peppercorns. Oh man, this is gonna be tasty. So just a little smash, that's good. I'm also gonna add to this a couple of Thai chilies that I'm gonna slice into little rings. I'm gonna use two. These are very, very spicy. Very spicy. Preheat my skillet, it's nice and hot. I wanna get some color on these dogs. Hot dogs, they need char. Okay, I've got three dogs. They're not even thawed. It totally doesn't matter. I want to cut it on an extreme bias. Or should we do ham? What do you think about matchsticks? Yeah, matchsticks. Go. We're gonna do matchsticks. That sounds really exciting. The first thing I did when I learned how to julienne was julienne hot dogs, of course. All right. Look at this, these beautifully prepped dogs, huh? Okay, I have some real tea cilantro. I am going to use it like a veg, cook it down a little. No one will know how well tea it was. I'm adding some oil. And now our julienne dogs are coming to join the party. Oh, they splattered. <laughs> I'm getting them in like one nice layer and then I'm gonna kind of let them hang out because I wanted to get some good color. While this browns, I'm gonna start warming up another skillet back here to warm up my tortillas. And the tortillas have only been hanging out for like a minute while I prepped all my stuff and they're totally thawed already. And I actually feel like they hold a lot better in the freezer. Your freezer should never be without tortillas. Never. Here, dogs, give them a little flip. They're getting crunchy and curly. This is gonna be so good. Wow, look at these dogs. And I'm gonna leave behind as much fat as possible because I want this now deliciously hot dog flavored fat to bloom my spices and stuff in. And I'm gonna throw some scallions in there. Big pinch of salt, my spices and chilies. And this is just gonna go for about 30 seconds. We just wanna get those spices to toast. My cilantro now. Now I'm lowering the heat. I don't wanna burn those spices. Okay, dogs are going back in. Amazing. We're gonna do a little tamari. Oh, so delicious. Sesame oil and a little toasted sesame seeds. Our taco filling is ready. Didn't even have to thaw anything. Look at that. Okay, we've got our warmed tortillas. A little smoosh of mayonnaise. You need that uh, moisture. And now our mala hot dog filling. All right, there are my tacos. I hope people understand how amazing these are. You wanna taste the hot dog taco? <laughs> I'm excited. Whoa. That's good. These are out of control. You're out of control. <laughs> You're out of control. It's really good. It has a good amount of heat. Kind of really spicy. But then those Szechuan peppercorns do that like numbing thing. Kind of cools you down. I love charred scallions and the texture of the sesame seed. And hot dogs are a great thing because it's like really quick, satisfying protein that you can make a whole, build a whole meal around. I can't believe I'm here talking about how great hot dogs are. Everybody knows this already. <laughs> I use my freezer as a place to keep building blocks for meals. One of the things I always have in there is pork chops. A lot of people don't know this. The freezer is a great place to store butter. And I also have some wine. Whenever there's any left over, just pop that into the freezer. And then I always have backup butter. The freezer is a great place to store butter. It will store indefinitely. And I just pull these up from the freezer every time I need one. The other things I need for this meal are all really pulled from my pantry or my kind of evergreen produce. So first thing I wanna do is I just wanna season the chops. Kosher salt. I've got a 10 inch cast iron and I wanna cook off some greens. So this happens to be Tuscan kale. Any kind of kale is great. To go with that, I'm just gonna do it super simple. I've got a couple cloves of garlic. I'm gonna use more garlic for the chops and I'm gonna thinly slice this. Get the old olive oil bottle out. 
garlic in. And while that garlic is heating up, I'm just gonna smash some of these garlic cloves and have them ready for the pork chop later. So I'm gonna season my garlic with some black pepper. And I also have Aleppo pepper. If you don't have Aleppo, you can of course use crushed red chili flakes. Oh my God, it already smells so good. A little more salt. This is my special burner. Does everybody have a special burner? But we're gonna start pretty much the same way for the pork chops. Even though they are beautifully fatty, I still need a little olive oil to get things started. Otherwise, they will just kind of stick and get dry and charred and it's a real bummer. Here comes like seven people. <laughs> If you were in the D and D world, you'd be munching yeah, on a cookie. Yeah. Oh, at the D and D clubhouse. Oh, so what you're saying is you would like a cookie? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you let me grab that, sir? Okay. <laughs> okay. It's just like it is an all-day restaurant. I'm literally running a restaurant. All right. I'm gonna turn these over. Yum. Woo. A little bit of fat got on the burner. You can see they're browning, but they're not like crazy dark brown yet. And that's a good color for that first turn. Oh yeah. I would say we're about halfway there, probably two more turns. Very gorge. Two to three minutes per side, probably three to four turns. One more turn. Things are happening. Hmm. Okay. Just gonna take them both out. Now we're gonna butter baste. I'm just gonna add the chops back to the pan. I'm gonna add a big piece of butter and I'm gonna add that whole garlic and then the thyme. I'm just gonna crush that up a little bit until the aromas are released. And I'm just gonna push the chops over to one side of the pan and tilt this down. So the rendered pork fat and the butter are kind of pooling at one edge and then using the spoon pick the butter up with the garlic and send it down. Okay, so the chops need to rest for five or 10 minutes just for all those juices to redistribute, which is the perfect amount of time to make a pan sauce. So first thing, I've got these capers. What did I say? Wine. I'm gonna do about half of this. Okay, now that that's reduced about halfway, I'm going to add horseradish, anchovy, just one. It's gonna dissolve right in there. And now, a little more butter and some lemon juice. Mmm. Okay, last thing is the chives. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. It's very lemony. I added a little bit of water just to kind of dilute it a tiny bit. And then also while the pork is resting, we have juices that have escaped and I'm just gonna add those too. Do you happen to know uh, your son's D&D &D character name and class? And we wanna know your son's alignment. What's your D&D &D name? Turtle Master. Turtle Master? And what's your rank? <laughs> <laughs> Turtle Master. Okay, chops are ready. So I'm just gonna cut the rib bone off. And then if you're sharing chops, it's good to slice them before you put them on the table. Okay, gorge. Now what happens? Everybody's playing video games. You know what I haven't had much of is a <laughs> dinner to myself. Mmm, <laughs> yum. Thank you for letting me cook dinner for myself. I really needed this time alone. <laughs> Worked out. I was worried that everything in my freezer was gonna be like, you know, braising meats or like steak, but I found some ground pork. I found some onions that I caramelized and I found some English muffins. So that's all thawed and ready to go. And I'm gonna make some pork burgers. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I make my burgers, so I'm gonna make some special sauce, which is kind of a non-negotiable for me. So I've got some guandilla peppers. If you didn't have guandilla peppers, I would use pickles. That's kind of like my go-to. Let me get that into a bowl. Add mayonnaise, a little squirt of ketchup. And I like to add a splash of Tabasco or like another vinegary hot sauce. Yeah, add a little pinch of salt, a little bit of black pepper. And that is our special sauce. 
over here, the only thing I really need to do is just butter my English muffin because I want to give it a good toast first. We've got this cast iron pan. I like to preheat it for at least five minutes just so like the whole thing is nice and hot. So the first thing I'm going to do is take our English muffin and we're just going to get that in there just to toast it. All right. So we're in a good place there. I'm just going to flip it onto the pork. So I've just got these kind of like pork meatballs. You don't need to shape them. I'm just going to take this, just slap it right down into the pan and really squish it. With a smash burger, you're just trying to squish it as much as possible so you can get it nice and thin and also get as much crispy surface area as possible. Plenty of salt. And then, you know, this is just wild style, but I'm just gonna put some of these caramelized onions right on top. It's really only gonna take three minutes on the first side, probably more like two. I'm gonna use the back of this to really get under there. Yeah, there we go. So you got some nice browning on that side. Yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna season this side also. Then I'm gonna get my American cheese on that. I was smart, I took them out of the package before I had to do this one-handed. Ah, stuck. Ah. So it's like, that's gonna take another minute or so. And by that point, the inside's gonna be like almost totally cooked through and then they're ready to eat. So I'm just gonna stack these guys on top of each other. Get that onto our little sizzle platter and we are ready to make a burger. We've got our toasted English muffin and we've got our special sauce down. Gonna move this doble patty, put the top on. And that is a double pork burger. You wanna see it? You wanna get closer to it? You want me to bring it to you? Mmm. Yeah. How about that? All right, do I get to eat it now? Great. I've been really craving a burger this week and even though this is not beef, I think it's gonna be just as good. Mm. Oh my God, that tastes so good. Mm. There's a little bit of spice from those guindilla peppers. Mm. My God, it's so good. I pulled three things from my freezer today. I had some vegetable broth and some chicken broth and I combined them together and I've been melting them on a pot right now. I also had some frozen ramen and ramen is something that I always have in my freezer because you can literally cook it from frozen, throw it in the pot of boiling water and there, your ramen is ready. And then frozen vegetables. The core ingredients are from the freezer. I am not a cheater. Like when we did the sandwich, I'm like the only one who used everything from the pantry. I must say that. So there is a lot of downtime in this recipe. What do you want me to tell you? Stories about my childhood, stories about my earrings. What are your earrings? We call them caireles, the crystals that come in like the chandeliers. So they were made by an artist for my mom many years ago in Argentina. Okay, you have your broth melted, then you're gonna get a skillet, put it on the heat, and this mix has broccoli and some zucchini, carrots, cauliflower, I love cauliflower. You can use whatever you want, any veggie will do. So okay, this is going, this broth is about to boil. I'm gonna add a little salt. So now, to give it a little flavor, add a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. So these guys look pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my ramen. It says, cook until desired texture is attained. All right, let's see if my desired texture is attained. Ooh, this is looking good. Don't do this at home, okay? Mmm, I attained the desired texture, guys. Mmm, oh my God, I'm so hungry. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna do this really quick. You don't wanna leave them in there too long because they're gonna get soggy. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the veggies, a little bit of the broth, top it off with some green onions. And then I got those microgreens that I like because they have like a nice crunch. All right, so I think the freezer challenge is done. Oh my God, this looks delicious. That's it, broasted ramen with the stir fried veggies, all from my freezer. Bon appetit. 
So the two things that I found in my freezer were frozen green beans and grated unsweetened coconut. So I thought that could be the base of a really, really good vegetable dish. My friend Thajal, she will cook most vegetables in a combination of coconut, garlic, and chili. It's a South Indian technique that her dad taught her. And I kind of swear by that at home too. Put it on any vegetable, it'll taste really good. I'm gonna use coconut oil just to give it that like extra coconutty flavor. And then once that's heated up, I'm gonna add my two garlic cloves and some chili flakes. Give it a little toast. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's starting to brown up, get fragrant. So now I'm gonna add a half of a chopped small yellow onion. All right, so now I'm just gonna toss these in the coconut oil and leave them be, and then we'll add everything else. All right, now we're gonna add our cut green beans and we're gonna add our coconut and just gonna toss that around and just make sure your beans get nicely coated. And I'm gonna add a little salt. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being my sous chef, mom. This is like the best best I could ask for. Dad as cameraman, mom as sous chef. These beans will cook pretty fast. You're just looking for them to be cooked through. Don't want them to be super mushy. You want them to kind of maintain their crunch. I'm just gonna, again, put these in a single layer in the pan and we'll let these cook for another couple of minutes. Smells pretty good, right? Dad? Yeah. <laughs> All right, our green beans have been cooking for a couple of minutes. They look done. I'm just gonna throw a little bit more salt, give them a quick toss, turn the heat off, finish with some generous squeezes of lime. I think that's good. I like it really limey, more limey than my mom would say. And just mix it up, you're done. You can eat that with rice, you can have it with roti. I'm gonna give it a taste. Ooh, it's kinda hot. Mmm. Oh my God, it's so good. Hits all the notes you want it to. Fatty, salty, tangy, a little brightness from the lime. Green beans are nicely cooked. They're still a little crunchy. It's kind of hard to believe that we put that together in like, I don't know, I feel like that was like 10 minutes start to finish, if that. And that's kind of the beauty of a good freezer meal. You can just, you know, summon some bags of frozen stuff out of the freezer. Everything's all there for you. You just gotta throw it in a pan, throw it in the oven. You know, this is kind of a perfect example of that. I'm gonna keep eating it. It's inspired by New England clam chowder. There are no clams because I did not order clams. Instead, I'm going to be using a combination of shrimp and hake. Please don't look in here. I peeled the shrimp before I froze it. And then instead of tossing the shrimp shells, I put them in a small pot. I cover them with water. And then I put like half an onion, a celery stalk, a couple of black peppercorns, a bay leaf, some salt and I just cooked at a simmer until the liquid just became like a really delicious shrimp broth. And this is going to be the, the real flavor base of the chowder. So the first thing I'm going to do is melt some butter. To this, I'm going to add my chopped leeks, a little bit of fennel, celery and green garlic. I'm going to season it with salt also and pepper. Once that's done, I'm going to add my potatoes. These can just go directly into the pot and I'm just gonna stir in the potatoes just to coat them. And then I'm going to add my pint of shrimp stock. I'm going to add maybe a half a cup more water. At this point, almost everything is in here except for the fish, just because it'll cook in two minutes, maybe less. So I'm just gonna bring this to a boil and then reduce it down to a simmer. I'm gonna let that cook until the potatoes are completely soft. So uh, potatoes have been cooking for about 12 minutes. The liquid has reduced a fair amount at this point. So I am gonna top it off with just a little bit of water so that my fish has enough room to poach. I am going to salt my shrimp and hake. And now that I'm back up to a simmer, I'm just going to slip these right in here and just give them a stir. And then I'm just gonna bring this to a gentle simmer because the seafood is gonna cook so fast, you don't really wanna walk away. I expect this will take about three minutes for the shrimp and the fish to cook through. This smells so good. I'm very excited. So this is more or less what we're looking for with the shrimp. It's bright pink, it's cooked through, it's not translucent. And then with the fish, you wanna just press it with the back of a spoon or a fork and just check that it's cooked on the inside, which this is. So I'm gonna reduce the heat down now. And the very last thing I'm going to do is add my cream. 
but I also have this milk that I have to use. So I'm going to add a little bit of milk. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add a lot of cracked black pepper. And I'm also going to check this for salt. Just needs a tiny touch more. And that's ready. It smells so good. I'm so excited to eat this. Last thing I want to do is add a couple of garnishes. One is a few more grinds of black pepper. Never too much pepper. Fresh squeeze of lemon on top. And then I'm also just going to finish it with some chives. And that is freezer chowder. Let's give it a taste. I cannot tell you how much I want oyster crackers right now. That is like the one thing that would make this even more perfect. It is just as good. This is gonna make a great lunch. Yes, I planned it so that I would end the shoot at my lunchtime. So I'm gonna make you something that I actually, I make this pretty often. It's like my once a week fried rice. I keep chorizo and rice, cooked rice in the freezer at all times. I will usually just double the amount that I'm making and then I freeze half of it. This is a really great way to use up leftovers as well. Like when you add the soy sauce, the ginger, the garlic, and then incorporate the rice and the eggs into it, it all of a sudden becomes something else. So that's what I'm gonna make you today. So I'm all set up back here. I've got my giant cast iron skillet. You definitely want to get your pan just screaming, screaming hot. I'm using half a cup of oil and it seems like a lot. And I mean, it is actually a lot, but it's called fried rice. And so every component of the dish is gonna take a little bit of oil. I'm gonna drop that in first and it's just in a, in a roll. I'm gonna break it up. The other thing that I have that I'm really excited about is huitlacoche. It's a type of fungus that grows on uh, corn here in Mexico. It's got a almost like a porcini-like flavor. You know, just a package of uh, eight ounces of mushrooms or four ounces of mushrooms uh, will work just as well. And then you can just like leave them undisturbed. I'm gonna give them a little bit of sea salt. That'll help them caramelize and also help them cook a little bit faster. While that is going, I'm gonna crack my eggs. If I'm doing an all veg fried rice, I'll usually do four eggs just to give a little extra protein. If I'm doing a lot of meat, I may only do use two. The chorizo's done. Oh, it smells so good. And then when it starts to release the liquid, you can just scrape up any of the chorizo bits that are on the bottom. Just to add it a little more salt and then I'm just gonna Put that directly into my bowl with the sausage. Now I'm gonna add another couple of tablespoons of oil and we're gonna add the vegetables. This is just all sort of up to you and what's in your um, fridge. I was feeling uh, Serrano today, so that's what I got. That's about two tablespoons of grated ginger and about four garlic cloves sliced and half of a white onion. And then all of this is just going in there. I'm gonna go ahead and season it and then just let it sit. <coughs> wow, that's a strong serrano. Once your ginger, your grated ginger, touches the bottom of the pan, it's gonna wanna stick, so that's when you wanna start moving things around. <coughs> that is a really strong serrano. In Mexico, fried rice is probably more common than most people think. There are actually a lot of Chinese immigrants in the north of the country, and so a lot of the marinades and a lot of the food across the northern states has influence from the Chinese immigrants in Mexico. So now I'm going to add more oil and I'm gonna add the eggs. So it's not even like 30 seconds and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. I'm gonna add the rest of the oil. Now I'm gonna break up this rice. This, you just wanna let it sit there for mm, probably about a minute or two just to fry the, the underside. You want it to be crispy, you want the rice to dry out. All right, so I'm getting a little color on the bottom. Now I'm gonna add everything back into the skillet. Add my soy sauce, toss everything around. Oh, it smells so good. And then once this is dried out a little bit and all the, uh, the soy sauce is evaporated, it's all done. I'm like super excited about this. All of my favorite things, the heat, the huit la coche, the chorizo. Mm. <laughs> mm. Wow. <laughs> that serrano is still spicy. When I was told about the freezer challenge, I knew that I didn't have too much stuff in the freezer. I knew I had a lot of ice cream, bread, peas, and a steak. I keep any bread that I don't use in the freezer. For this, it's gonna be like kind of a somewhat mushy, creamy pea situation that gets really herby and 
uh, has some heat through some chili flakes that goes on top of fried bread. So first I'm gonna slice some bread up. I'd say like some nice thick slices, slight angle or not. It's actually hot out here, so I'm wearing a tank and I was working out, so please don't make fun of me. Please don't at me. Please give me a break. Thank you very much. All right, I'm just gonna use one skillet for this whole thing, but first I'm gonna fry out the bread. I'm gonna go medium high. This is one of my favorite things, probably on the planet, just like simple fried bread. I'm gonna take about a half cup chopped herbs. This could be any herbs, as long as it's tender. This is kind of leftover parsley I had, some mint and some tarragon. And then this is a pretty small lemon, so I'm just gonna zest the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna grate two cloves of garlic into this. What you're creating here is like a garlicky, lemony, herby, almost like salsa verde, I would say. Oil feels hot, so I'm gonna add the bread. And then just with tongs, I'm just gonna press it down. Sometimes I'll turn the pan around in case there's some uneven heat going on. I'm using electric these days. <sighs> the man doesn't have stove top, so I don't know what to tell you. But you're looking for a deeply golden color underneath. That's nice. Look at that. I'll flip that over. Yeah, that looks nice. I like putting a little bit of salt. I'll set this aside for now. Let that pan cool for a bit. I'm gonna just slice one small shallot up. All right, pan's on the stove. We're gonna go medium heat, a little more oil. So I'll just add that. Okay, so I want the shouts to get soft, a little bit brown. You're just sweating them. Take a look, my skin is natural, all natural. I'm gonna add my peas. I completely thawed one bag full. I'm gonna add half a cup of cream, heavy cream. Okay, I'll start mashing these a bit. While that's cooking down, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to this, a little bit of salt to this, and a little bit of salt to that. The, the peas are already cooked, so what you're trying to do is just kind of heat them up as quickly as possible. Okay, these seem to be doing pretty nice. I'm gonna turn them off. They're nice and tender, they're creamy. I still think a little bit more salt. Maybe a little cheese. And a little bit of chili. These are really good. This is like a perfect snack or it could be like a side dish with or without the bread for dinner. I'm probably gonna save these peas for dinner. Whoops. Mm. Mm. You can try a bite here. Mm. Nice, right? Very good. Mm. Really whole. <laughs> 